I think the gentleman from Pennsylvania and what he is referring to also is cleaning up our, or taking care of our infrastructure which has aged so much and is just a massive problem. I know it is something that the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee is committed to finding some solutions. One of the great leaders of this, and Bill Schuster of Pennsylvania, uh, I'm proud that he's a colleague from Pennsylvania, and his committed commitment is a second to none with trying to find some solutions to rebuild America. So I'll yield five minutes to the gentleman, my colleague from Pennsylvania, Mr. Schuster. Uh, I thank my friend from Pennsylvania. Thank you for bringing us all together here on the floor this evening to talk about such an important issue and an important bipartisan piece of legislation. H.R. 1861, the Infrastructure, Jobs, and Energy Independence Act, is a bill that's time has come. Uh, we came together, Republicans and Democrats, to figure out ways to find the funds without raising taxes uh, to uh, invest in America's infrastructure. And this bill does that from investing in clean energy, uh, rebuilding uh, America's aging locks, dams, bridges, and roads, uh, creating jobs, which of course uh, all the, Amer the American people are very focused on how to create jobs, and this bill will do just that. Uh, it invests in cleaning up our environment, uh, and it again has one of the largest uh, infrastructure investments in the history of the United States. With this bill, we can do that. And again, it doesn't raise taxes. Uh, by opening up our offshore uh, resources and, and bringing that energy to bear to make us less energy independent is absolutely critical. And in Pennsylvania, we know firsthand with the Marcellus shale gas play that's there, it gives Pennsylvania a second chance, a second chance to revitalize our economy in Pennsylvania and once again become one of the driving states in the economy of the United States of America. Uh, so we know that firsthand. And it was Pennsylvania 150 years ago with its coal and its oil that was found there that uh, made Pennsylvania so key in the growing and the building up of America. Uh, I want to focus on the, the funding that would go towards transportation. Uh, my colleague has a, has a, a great uh, uh, visual aid up there talking about the needs. Uh, almost a trillion dollars we need to invest over the next 15, 20 years in our roads and bridges. Uh, aviation, uh, $87 billion. Our dams, we're sure, in very much in need. And water, uh, we have about a $300 billion backlog across this country to rebuild the infrastructure. Uh, uh, to get rid of sewage waste and make sure we have clean drinking water. Uh, five, five billion dollars in inland waterways uh, and locks and dams which are so critical. Uh, this country grew up, uh, became a power because of our waterways and be able to move uh, goods, and so goods uh, at a very inexpensive rate. We need to revitalize those to continue to use those waterways that we have natural, uh, but it takes money to rebuild those locks and dams. Uh, when you look around America, I think everybody has driven across a pothole or sees a bridge that's crumbling, or many of us uh, live with tremendous congestion. And in fact, the congestion is crippling America. It costs American commuters approximately $115 billion a year uh, because of wasted time and fuel. And those numbers continue to rise. 4.8 billion hours per year, Americans are stuck in traffic. Uh, we have to find out a way to reinvest in the infrastructure of this ma uh, country. When you talk about j uh, trade, how can you talk about trade and increasing trade if you can't figure out how to get those bulldozers, those caterpillar tractors that are going to be shipped overseas, if you can't get them from Peoria, Illinois, to the ports of Philadelphia and the ports of Los Angeles to send them over there, uh, they're going to sit in those yards. We've got to figure out a way how to get commerce, uh, not only in foreign markets, but also it's coming into this country, and it's the transportation system that's absolutely vital to that. Today, we currently are spending uh, about $40 billion on our, on our transportation system, highways, bridges, transit systems, when we actually should be spending in the federal level about $62 billion. And that number is going down because of the, the constraints of, of our budget constraints. Uh, so we've got to find new revenues, and, and uh, the Congressman Murphy's 1861, this plan that we've supported in a bipartisan way, uh, is do, going to do just that. Get the funds to be able to invest in our infrastructure. Uh, in our infrastructure that, by the way, when you look back to the Constitution of the United States, uh, a lot of people say, well, government shouldn't be investing in a lot of things. And I agree. There's a lot of things we do in Washington, D.C. we shouldn't be investing in. But transportation is not one of those. From the time of our founding fathers, in Article I of the, of the Constitution, it talks about uh, the federal government regulating commerce with foreign nations and among the several states. 
uh, regulating and encouraging commerce, uh, to build post offices and post roads. The post roads of the 1800s are the highways and byways of today. This nation uh, wouldn't be the great nation it was if we weren't connected. And James Madison, uh, uh, the father of the Constitution, I want to read one of his quotes. The power of establishing post roads must, in every view, be a harmless power and may perhaps be judicious management, become productive of great public conveniency. Nothing which tends to facilitate the intercourse between the states can be deemed unworthy of public care. Madison made that, uh, made that argument. Also, early on in our history, under the Jefferson administration, they authorized the building 100 percent federal dollars of, of Route 40, which went from Baltimore into the Ohio Territory. Uh, they, they authorized it under Jefferson, and it was, the construction was completed under Madison, and it opened up the territory, the Ohio Territory, to being, be able to produce commerce and prosperity to America. So early on, in our nation, the founding fathers knew the importance of our, of our waterways, of building roads, of connecting this country. And I, on this side of the aisle, can proudly say that it's been a Republican tradition in the United States government, in the United States Congress. Abraham Lincoln built the Transcontinental Railroad, not in the middle of a recession, but in the middle of the great Civil War. He knew how important it was to connect America, to make sure that we moved commerce in an efficient way, in a safe way. And from there, Teddy Roosevelt building the Panama Canal, which connected the, the two coasts of water. Extremely important to, to us, for us to become a, a national, an international power in, in commerce and in trade. And then, of course, Eisenhower coming back from World War II, uh, seeing what the Germans did with being able to move their troops around, uh, had the idea that not only would it be good for America's uh, security, but it would be good for America's commerce to connect this country. And that's exactly what he went about doing in the 50s. We built the interstate highway system. And I've talked to many of my colleagues that have said, the roads have been built, we don't need to spend on them, but they're crumbling, they need to be rebuilt. And one of the facts that I think we all ought to remember, it took us, 200, or it took us 65 years to go from 200 million to 300 million people, and we crossed that threshold about 2005 or 6. It's only going to take us about 30 some years to go from 300 million to 400 million. This nation is going to continue to grow. We've got to be able to move people. We've got to be able to move uh, our products in and out of the, throughout this country and to the ports to be able to trade globally. So this is something that has to become a national priority. And I believe that uh, this bill, 1861, will help it to become a reality with the funding levels needed to invest in our transportation system, which, again, when you invest in transportation, you can see the return on investment, whether it's economic development or jobs created in the short short term from building it or the long term in the commerce that it produces and the efficiencies that allows our businesses to have. So again, uh, I thank the gentleman for bringing us together on a bipartisan basis. Uh, I would hope more of our members would sign up for this bill so we can push it to the finish line. So thank you again, Mr. Murphy, and I yield back uh, the balance of my time. I thank my friend from uh, Pennsylvania for his comments and then helping to lay out how we need to rebuild America's infrastructure, clean up our environment, and do this without raising taxes, borrowing, or buying more from OPEC. Also to